truth is a fairly interesting concept um, in that something being absolutely true um, what would you say that is indisputable indisputable maybe um, could also mean that um, it's not so much indisputable but it could also mean that you've expressed a truth correctly it could also mean that you understand something correctly it could mean that you perceive something correctly um, what what on what level are you operating in terms of truth um, what do you want out of truth what is it that makes you look for truth there's always conditions behind anything um, The theory of truth that is closest to what I subscribe to, predictably enough, is uh, the Eastern one. It's generally ascribed to the Jains, again. Uh, it's the theory of maybe, siadvada, um, where for every, any proposition, you just say maybe. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, maybe it's inexpressible, maybe it is and it isn't, and it's inexpressible. It's a sevenfold theory. I'll leave a link below. It's pretty common stuff. Um, the idea of relative truths or predicated truths or um, contextualized truths or truths that are beholden to context. Um, what it essentially does is it, it deconstructs every idea that you might have concerning truth and forces you to look at your own bias in terms of your seeking of truth do you want to understand it do you want to express it do you want to use it practically do you want to spread it do you want to uh, I don't know any number of truths any number of angles to absolute truth are out there uh, there are moral truths there are physical truths there are any number of them out there what truth is it are you, what aspect of truth are you attempting to get at? Um, as I say, it's called often the theory of maybe. Siad is sometimes translated as maybe, but I like the word, or the, 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 the term theory of maybe, simply because uh, the Western tradition seems to be based upon identity being an absolute thing. Um, which I have issues with, as, I, as I've said. I don't. I think uh, identity is unfortunately some a concept that can, in many ways, imprison your thinking and recoil upon you. As a matter of fact, whereas siadvad maybe a term which eschews yes and no, absolutes, um, is a lot more. I won't say useful because it's not. It's not even. Uh, it's not even attempting to be useful. It's simply a way of deconstructing truth. Uh, it's a tool. It's not a belief. It's like anekantavada. It's it's a tool. It's a um, a way of approaching an idea. A way of approaching things. A way of approaching perception, opinions, um, that kind of thing. Syadavad allows you to approach the truth. And it lets you know that you are actually approaching the truth. It sort of brings you into the equation um, of truth. You're not just a, a bystander the way you are in the Western scheme of things. Because the latent in the theory of maybe is what aspect of truth are you looking for? What do you want to do with that truth? Because there's no truth outside of here and outside of here uh, is kind of outside of the boundaries of anything that I would have anything to do with because I'm simply a function of consciousness. Um, without consciousness, I'm kind of nothing. So, you have to remember that the truth is... Truth contains you. The truth contains... Um, or perhaps it doesn't contain you, but the equation that, uh, of, of searching for truth contains you, rather. Uh, the equation of looking for that which is true involves you and it involves the person who is looking for truth um, 
Like, I can say that I'm sitting here in front of my house in the blazing sun making a video. Is that a truth? Well, sure, yeah, it's also, in, in many ways, it's a completely vacuous truth. But I suppose you could say that it's a truth nonetheless. Okay, but I'm sitting out here for a reason. I'm involved in the truthness of this situation. Me, I'm here, I'm in it. So, Syadavad, in my opinion, brings logic back to the human level. I've said before, it's kind of crazy that we would actually have a, a theory that recoils upon us, and then we act upon the fact that, that, that our, our theory has recoiled upon us, the way Benatar seems to say. Um, if our logical system and our ethical system somehow militate towards our non-existence, well, you've got two choices, don't you? You either don't exist or you don't follow your own, um, your own morals and ethics. Um, either that or you get yourself another set of ethics, of course. Syadavad, <laughs> um, or Syadavada, Syadvada, um, allows you to operate within the terms of truthness and logic without being absolute. It reminds you that everything that you've come up with is based upon certain premises. As I've said, there's the, there's the three um, base points of the three laws of logic. Now, the Western way of looking at it just takes those three laws and says these are absolutes and we will not revisit them. End of story. That leads to the rutted thinking that I referred to in so many other vid videos where you just, you get stuck in an idea which strangely resembles religion, I hate to say it, where I have the truth, I have access to the truth and that, you know, I can spread it. I don't have to actually ponder whether or not I've got the truth anymore. To me, that is a species of fanaticism. Sorry, the sun is moving. I guess I'll have to move here. Um, if you want to avoid being fanatical about the truth, I think you have to constantly remind yourself that, you're, that your ideas of truth are predicated on other things. Now, it, it, it doesn't make your truthfulness any less truthful, but it's just based upon previous assumptions, which you must always bear in mind, are assumptions. Um, you can't take truth out of its context. You can't take facts out of context. Uh, everything has a context. Everything has a bias built into it. Maybe if I move over here, I'll get some sun in my face there. <laughs> Not that anyone wants to see my face, but this is going to take more than one video, I think, to express my sort of, I don't know if you'd call it my epistemology, but just my idea of the closest thing I would have to what I say is um, my place to stand. Um, my Archimedean certainty. My Archimedean certainty, I would say, is almost a determined uncertainty or coming to terms with the fact that we more or less don't have or may not have a fixed point in which to to start everything from it's not solipsism and it's not absolutism it's a means of i don't know maybe bringing the two together sort of reconciling um absolutism with relativism um it's not really agnostic um and it's certainly not absolutist it's saying that truth is extremely important um, whereas you know if you're agnostic about truth you say well there are no truths we don't know we don't we don't know anything at all whereas Syadavad or Syadvad I keep mispronouncing it um, I, I'm so used to calling it just the theory of maybe which I like um, the theory of maybe says within certain contexts certain things are true so it avoids the trap of absoluteness that, unfortunately, Western philosophy tends to fall into. Um, I'll have to get back to I'll have to get back to this with another video. But uh, it's a fascinating theory, uh, and it's um, it solved a heck of a lot of problems for me. Problems that have arisen in logic, in dialectic, in 
many other things. Just the Western way of seeing things, which tends to, in my opinion, inevitably lead to something somewhat nihilistic. Um, there are Western versions of this, but uh, I guess we'll get into those in another video. 